Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. This is a continuation video in the series of discussions I had with David Larkins, the line editor of Pendragon, about the upcoming new edition. In this video, we talk about Greg Stafford, the founder of Chaosium, and a great TTRPG designer who has left a fantastic legacy on all kinds of different products and on the hobby as a whole. David talks about writing the new edition of Pendragon with the presence of Greg imbued within it and how you deal with the legacy of a creator in putting forward a new and definitive edition of a game. I'll jump across to that interview in just a moment, but first, please remember to subscribe and thanks for watching. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so Greg Stafford, he founded Chaosium and his um, initial works were in the world of Glorantha and specifically through the RuneQuest RPG and um, other game media, board games and so forth. And um, that <clears throat> was a focus of his uh, for, I mean, we could say roughly the first decade of the company. And then we have Call of Cthulhu coming in during that time as well. But that really was kind of uh, under Greg's supervision, but he was not directly involved in the creation of that particular game. So his next venture, his next game design venture that, you know, is significant is the Pendragon RPG, um, which he later called his uh, magnum opus, basically. Um, RuneQuest and Glorantha, although they came from, from his imagination, have had many diverse hands contributing since by design and intent. Pendragon was always sort of Greg's baby. It was what Greg really focused on in terms of not just system design, but also world design. So for example, he synthesized uh, many different threads of Arthurian legend together into one cohesive and coherent setting, which is, you know, quite an accomplishment. I'm, I'm not aware of anyone else who's done that level of, of narrative synthesis. And we're coming up on uh, 40 years since the game's creation. The various editions of the game were all just sort of refinements of both the, the setting and the game mechanics. Um, Greg always intended for the game to be accessible and um, easy to pick up. So that's why he moved it to move the BRP off the percentile to a D20 system and just the D20s and the D6s. Any gamer's gonna have those and um, you know sort of slim down the skill list but he also introduced the traits and passions which was the the sort of revolutionary game design um, change that he made or that he introduced with with Pendragon he got all of this from a lifetime's interest in the Arthurian mythos as, as a kid he had a neighbor who collected these old Prince Valiant Sunday comics and these were these were full color comics that filled the entire page of a newspaper and it was serialized very narrative and um and so this uh this neighbor collected these and put them in a big portfolio and greg would go over and flip through the portfolios read all of them i got to fish that out from my bookshelf i always love it when i can put something to hand immediately i didn't know yes. that, uh passions and traits were introduced in Pendragon. I thought they were introduced in RuneQuest. That's interesting. But before, I'll ask more about that, but I'd love to dive into Greg's process for creating Pendragon. I know that Glorantha kind of came from, uh, it was sort of built from novels and it was built from board games and it was built from, you know, so much that came together. What was the mm -hmm. creation process for Pendragon? Did Greg really sit down very explicitly to create a TTRPG? Yes, very much so. Um, I, there had been a uh, Arthurian board game that had come that Chaosium had put out in the early '80s, uh, but Greg turned his attention to making an RPG um, when RuneQuest was going to go into its uh, third edition, and he had initially intended to introduce traits and passions there, but uh, due to a bunch of other factors that just didn't, it wasn't going to happen. And kind of thought, oh, this might be a good opportunity, <laughs> you know, to, to maybe do an RPG based on King Arthur and his knights. And um, because these, these are tales of passion, these are tales of 
everyone's a knight, but every knight is different. So hmm, I think my trait systems could really fit here. And so what he did is he, he sat down with a translation of, of Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort d'Artur, um, which is the the original synthesis, actually. I mean, it was a, you know, late medieval collation of the previous several centuries worth of, of Arthurian tales into one grand narrative. So he sat down with that, and we still have his copies of the paperback Penguin editions of, of Le Mort, uh, where he went through and just underlined a bunch of places and you can see that he already had the trait and passion system worked out in his head because he's like circling passages and he's saying Lancelot is valorous here or you know Gawain fumbles his love passion or whatever you know he's sort of mapping the trait and passion system onto the narrative from uh, this book so that was his starting point really um, and then in later years he decided that uh, we were going to treat like even the real world history uh, of the of the setting as if the medieval scholars ideas chiefly um Geoffrey of Monmouth in his history of the kings of Britain uh we're gonna use Geoffrey's uh history as if it really happened which includes things like oh the Romans never really conquered Britain the the British kings just kind of agreed to work with the Romans and things like that right like there's these these um almost like propaganda elements in there but it's like oh yeah the britons are totally descended from the trojans you know isn't that cool and um and so it's the synthesis chiefly of uh mallory and jeffrey of monmouth that forms the the basis then from which we you know expand out so when you and i were discussing this topic a little bit earlier we talked about how it would be very interesting to kind of reintroduce uh, Greg for this video to maybe an audience who are getting into Pendragon because of the release of the new edition and don't know about him or his body of work. Mm -hmm. I am uh, always a little sad that I think that Titanic TTRPG creators like Greg don't get enough kind of like critical analysis about how cool their work is the same way that directors or artists might. Uh, can you talk mm -hmm. about what made Greg special as a writer and as a game designer. Yeah, absolutely, and that that I I share your sentiment um, very much. I, I think uh, Greg's greatest work, in my opinion, is the Great Pendragon Campaign, which was sort of the culmination of this uh, timeline into one massive eighty game year mega campaign, right? And you can really see all that work that he put in, because I mean, he he. Uh, was a man of many hats. And so he was a, a shaman, but he was also like a scholar and a mythologist. And so, yeah, it's like what you're saying. I mean, it really does deserve some recognition and scholarly attention, I would say, because he literally put like uh, 40 plus years of research into uh, you know, the evolving vision of Pendragon. And that's why for his his untimely passing, that's why he was even referring to 6th edition as his ultimate edition, because he really felt like it had finally gotten to this point where he was able to include all the different elements that, you know, he had sort of been turning up with, with all of his, his research. There's a bibliography of suggested reading at the end of the 6th edition core book that's going to appear uh, that Greg wrote with annotations of like oh here's here's all the different books i consulted and it's every from everything from literature to popular histories to academic histories um modern fiction websites all kinds of things you can really see the depth and the breadth of his of his research there so let's move across to the new edition and sort of the process of you working and putting it together uh Greg passed before the new edition was complete and mm -hmm. you stepped in to ha basically ha you know recapture something that as we both said it is you know a titanic uh work of create creation game design you know writing can you talk to us about that process a little bit in a lot of ways I, I still work with Greg every day because he left behind a, a huge uh, legacy of, of manuscripts that, um, you know, even now 
we're going to be seeing coming out for for years to come not just in terms of the core rule book but a bunch of other stuff that's going to come out in supplements and you know the revised great pendragon campaign and so on and so forth um fifth edition came out in the early 2000s and it's been through a couple of iterations 5.1 5.2 but you know greg started working on sixth edition over 10 years ago because he realized like oh fifth edition was almost there but we're, you know not quite so we're going to do a sixth edition and uh obviously put a lot of work into it not just himself but with a lot of contributors developers i was lucky enough to be one of those people and he approached me in uh summer of 2018 and he said hey like i'm getting ready to retire and i want to kind of gradually get out of um the 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 nitty-gritty <laughs> you know of game design and i want to hand off my different games to other folks and so you know he did that with runequest obviously and so um i was his pick for pendragon in terms of who's going to run the line i'm still working with all the other uh brilliant people who were contributing to the line as well as well as some other newer folks and um it was just some uh interesting timing there and that that was four months before he passed away so we had just a little bit of time where we were working together directly but i had been working with him for years prior to that as well so um it, it was uh, like obviously his passing was way too soon and, and tragic but I'm, I'm glad that at least he was able to get that set up before we lost him and uh, his manuscript draft for the sixth edition uh, core rule book was complete. You know, um, we were just putting the final little little bows on it, uh, finishing up the monster chapter, the bestiary chapter, you know, that kind of thing when he passed away. So he left us with uh, first drafts, basically. And that's what we've been polishing up and refining ever since. But these are still fundamentally Greg's works. It's just it's just been a case of developmental editing and copy editing, really. We've talked a lot about Greg, who you know, fantastic writer and game designer. But I, th I think it's also important to recognize you're a very experienced writer and game designer yourself. And when you work on a project, you impart a lot of yourself into it. Um, I, I, I want to talk about your sort of influence specifically on Pendragon. Um, what do you think the sort of biggest element of yourself in your own kind of creative process that is not necessarily shared by Greg, which you think has come in? Ooh, that's a provocative question. I, I don't mean that way to be clear. I think, you know, I think the beauty of TTRPGs is that we are all yes. this community that are all contributing. And yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, well, I mean, hmm. I do have a bias towards like the medieval romances, right? Um, I think that those are some of the richest and most entertaining iterations of the Arthurian legend. Um, I, it's nothing against more modern interpretations or 19th century Victorian interpretations. Those have their place as well. But yeah, I do, I do like uh, the troubadours <laughs> and their and their ilk and so there's maybe a little bit more of that uh in the new edition you know maybe a little bit of a return to acknowledging the fact that there was sort of a a um a francophone literary contribution to the legends and it's maybe dialed down the british celticness just a, just a wee bit there's nothing dramatic here, but you know that that's definitely one of my biases. I'll admit to it. You know, <laughs> I'd love to hear from just a processor's perspective your own sort of uh, personal uh, experience here. Was it difficult to be putting something together while trying to be so respectful of the source material? I know that you know just editing any work is difficult because you don't want to layer your own voice too heavily onto something. But sure. when you, yeah, you, you can see the complexity. <laughs> the, the main thing is that uh, Greg's writing style, his sort of um, 
raw writing style is very stream of consciousness you know like he's just he's just one of those writers like i'm gonna get everything down on on paper so to speak uh into the document and so mostly it's just been uh, a case of of like putting things in the right place you know like oh this paragraph here could really go in this other section you know or or this seems to be a little out of order or we need to clarify this point here it's it's sort of a little vague you know and um like i say i mean i i um i very much am still working with his voice with his authorial voice on a daily basis um which has been you know kind of comforting honestly and um it doesn't need like his writing style is very distinct so it, it doesn't it doesn't behoove me to try and change that um it's it's mostly just clarity you know aiming for clarity as much as possible because it's a rule book as a final question is there a element a, a mechanic a you know story section a, you know a piece of art uh anything that has come up partic particularly since Greg's passing that you would most wish to be able to be like, hey, isn't this cool? Check this out to Greg. One thing that I, I do uh, regret not being able to show show off to Greg is that in the starter set, the starter set is is all Greg except for book one, which is the solo quest, the tutorial. And that was something I got to write myself. And um, I wish he could have seen it because I think it's pretty cool. And um, it's it's honestly like uh, me sort of taking Greg's voice and and his enthusiasm for the game and turning it into this, you know, tutorial adventure. And, you know, I think I did a good job on it personally. You know, we could talk more about it in the future. But um, yeah, you know, it, it would have been nice if he could have seen that.